welcome to Exceptional Effort Mind and Body. Today we're talking about escape and reset nature, the benefits of tranquility. Here with Stephen, Heather and Enemy. How are you guys today? Great, thanks. Very well. Very well, I'm just getting my day started. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, different end of the, the time zone for me. My day well, technically has just started, but... Anyway, so coming back to our topic, I mean, nature, how important is nature, getting out into nature for our, for our health and well-being? More than we uh, focus on, you know, more than we seem to realize, yeah. I think, especially you know, in the conventional healthcare system. Yeah. Getting away from the um, the Netflix and out into some sun. I know when I was growing up, my mum was always big on um, vitamin D, as she she called it. She she had two vitamin Ds. One was was the sunshine. The other one was what she called vitamin dirt, as in get out and yeah. play into the dirt. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The the microorganisms that we're exposed to when we're out uh, getting our hands dirty and interacting with the soil and with nature strengthens our immunity and there are so many other benefits to our uh, microbiome from that interaction that I think when we intentionally separate ourselves from it and sanitize and sterilize everything, we're missing out on a ton of benefits. I've actually heard, I don't know how true it is, but like people that have nut allergies and things like that, and, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail from making this comment, <laughs> but, I, but yeah. I've heard that like people that actually go to that extreme of of with the, the sanitizers and, and really, because what they do, that not only do they kill bad bacteria, but they kill the good bacteria in the body, which is a defensive mechanism. Bacteria might, might be the right word, but they kill good things in your body by overdoing mm. the, the sterilization. Absolutely. And, and no. that relates to nut allergies? Well, I, my understanding is that the, the, I'm not sure exactly how it connects, but um, maybe we're getting way, way off topic here. Uh, but I understood that, you know, because people don't have the same immunity anymore because they've killed off that, that ability through overdoing the whole um, uh, sanitizer. Cleanliness factor. Like the whole idea of like not getting dirty, the whole idea of not exposing your kid in small doses to, you know, the environment. Um, so like in being overprotective, you know, it's potentially leading to um, what it is that I think you're talking about, Damien. I think that, you know, it's, there's, you know, obviously it's a, you know, a work in progress, but I think that that's what you were kind of alluding to is that the exactly. lack of the interaction with the environment, the lack of, you know, exposing your body to, you know things that you're allergic to two things or that you're potentially allergic to two things that you know um, may be harmful you know like may be somewhat harmful in, in in not exposing yourself to it you're doing yourself your body no justice is like for better lack of terms yeah Absolutely. exactly Go i ahead, have me. a very nice story about this you know the grandmother of my uh, husband she was living in the mountains, you know, this was a poor region and there were no doctors or, or these things, you know, I, I speak about over a hundred years ago. And they ate, like you said, a vitamin dirt, you know, they ate clay. They were living in the mountains near the river and there were different kinds of clay and they would, they would eat different colors of clay to get new minerals and to, um, to become healthy again. Yeah. So, what children would do when they play uh, uh, outside they would get particles of uh, of ground and to and they would do it on purpose you know to, yeah. to eat things to you can enemy you can actually order dirt in the mail to eat um oh, okay. pre-prepared -pre dirt for various gastrointestinal issues and diseases for Crohn's disease and uh, inflammatory bowel disease and uh, and and this is this I'm not saying you should do this I'm just saying it's available um, that a lot of people who don't find they get benefits from traditional treatment go this route and it's kind of like the idea of a, you know a transplant bringing all that bacteria back into your gut to repopulate your your microbiome i think there's a lot of studies uh going on and it's not as crazy as it sounds when you yeah. look at the the science of the microbiome yeah i know my husband he was a forest ranger for a long time and i know from studies that 
forest strangers since they walk a lot in the forest with mm. their shoes they bring in the good microbes yeah. from the fruit into the house and this brings an, a better environment into the house so it's always mm. good when you go into the forest to walk with the shoes from the forest into the house just to uh, improve the the quality of the house let's say yeah <laughs> Uh, it's speaking strange. of uh, speaking of forests, have any of you heard of both the concept of forest bathing and of uh, blue? What's it called? Blue blue something. There's been studies done on the effect of water and the ocean on your health, and also forests. Well, it's the um, the negative ions maybe you've been talking about. Yeah. You're talking water. about blue space. Uh, maybe, yeah. There, I, I know there's a prominent uh, scientist who studied this and did a, a movie and books and everything about it, but there, there have been a lot of studies about um, the effects of the ocean and being near water and on the forest. It, it's my understanding that most of the studies done on the nature effects on our health have actually been done on the forest. But now we're starting to also focus on water and they're different but they have a uh, measurable not just on our mood right they affect our mood they make us happy but they have measurable uh, chemical effects on on our body so there's all these layers to actually uh, create spaces to soak in all those benefits and here we talk about green spaces in our cities keeping people healthy and happy but now uh, blue spaces as well are, are being looked at as ways to uh, uh, well like the study that I sent earlier um, it talks about how first you can decrease the fight-or-flight response the stress response by being around water uh, you can physically like lower your blood pressure and calm all those negative responses but then you can also improve uh, thinking um, people who live near water tend to be happier and more altruistic which I found really funny just generous people living by the water what is that connection I don't know but there's there's a lot of studies going on about this I haven't read a study but I know that uh, moving water like uh, waves or currents, yeah. the, um, anyway, rivers, currents, whatever is moving yes. water, it generates negative ions and forests also generate negative ions. And this is what after a um, uh, rain, heavy rain, it's also yeah. negative uh, ions, it's recharging our body. So maybe yeah. this um, is doing this to us, uh, what you're referring to, it's, uh, it's what we need. We don't need positive ions. We need to walk barefoot on the ground. This is what is recharging our batteries. Yeah. This is the same when we are near the ocean, near water, near a current, in the forest, you know, the negative ions, they recharge our batteries. And yeah. well, I guess it must have other health effects than just, you know, uh, feeling well. It can have, uh, I, I guess, uh, other things. Like you said, right. being touristic, when you feel well, you, of course, then you can do things uh, in your environment as well. Yeah. If we lower stress, uh, we f immediately feel well and mentally and emotionally, but then we're also improving our resistance to disease, lowering risk factors of certain diseases by uh, de decreasing blood pressure and all the, the negative effects of stress. Yes. Uh, we're part of nature anyway. Mm -hmm. It's part of that too, like because yeah, I know when you have the there's a certain sound level that they use for for meditation that that has that calming effect. The water and you mentioned rain before as well. I, I know I love mm -hmm. the sound of rain on the, on the roof, and but it's that that constant mo monotone is maybe not the right word. I'm not sure the exact terminology. It's got blank in my head about that, but um, that that constant sound can be very relaxing which again flows into the lower blood blood pressure so same as like being I used to years ago I, I would go out into the forest and just sit under a tree and listen to the breeze go through the leaves and it, again that just I found that very calming and, and relaxing mm. and I would feel really refreshed after that um, and it's probably that sound affecting your brain waves that then um, causes you to um, 
uh, to, to lower the blood pressure, make you yeah. better all around. Great. Yeah, all of our, our senses take in so many different levels of that experience. It's like safety and security in like a very indirect way. Like there's a lot of like, I guess it's very soothing, very homey, um, very primitive. I know I, I, I sound weird using that term, but it's like, you know, at one point we, you know, houses never existed, you know, environments like this never existed. And so imagine what we lived in, you know, centuries ago. I mean, we lived in forests, we lived in, you know, a lot of people probably resided close to the water simply because you know the benefits that come with water like obviously another yeah. food source in water um it's calming you know relaxing you feel safe because you're you don't have to worry about something coming from the water you know you can focus on you know the land you know there's a bunch of different things that i think go into it and you guys have definitely touched on you know quite a few different areas that i think are all being impacted just in the bigger picture mm -hmm. I noticed, so like, what if you don't live near the ocean or a forest? Then what? <laughs> well, that's where in preparing for this show, I really because I um, normally in the city, and uh, it really hit me um, in preparing for this show because since COVID nineteen, I've been down at the beach house uh, mostly because you know working from home. So I thought, well, why not go down here? And and I've got that. Um, you know, going out the back, I've got a forest at the back and I'm actually near the ocean as well. So I regularly go down there. So I'm getting the forest and water. But what I've actually, in thinking about this show, I've really noticed these past few weeks, especially there's been a lot of um, very intense work that I've been doing, a lot of legal disputes, some um, uh, with you know, some wind farm. One of my clients is a wind farm manufacturer, oh, developer. Um, there's a billion dollar wind farm they've got on there's massive claims that I'm, I'm fighting on that and it's it's quite stressful there's a lot of dollars involved here but I, I've actually said in thinking about this show I've noticed that it um, that pressure hasn't been there as much and I'm just wondering was it because of, of where I'm actually located now having that that regular relaxation yeah. and I mean you say if you're living in the city how do you get it out of, of that um, I think, I mean, I, I don't know for what most cities are like, but, I mean, I know Melbourne has a lot of uh, parklands and uh, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, went into the city with a, a friend and my son and his son, we went for a bike ride and we rode along the river and even though we weren't actually out in the forest, so to speak, we were along the water. And then we stopped where there was a little cafe and um, you, we couldn't sit down, obviously, because you're not allowed to sit down and have a coffee. But we, we, it was open, we grabbed the coffee and we stood by the water having a chat. And it was very relaxing, even though we were in a built up area. So yeah, I think there are bodies of water we mm -hmm. can get around in, in most cities and, and just be around yeah. as well. I was going to say, adding on to that too, in California, I know that in major cities like SF, like SF, San Francisco has like parks galore, obviously not very accessible at this point, although they do fortunately for them have the ocean. And I, and I actually had a friend who was out at Port Funston the other day. So, I mean, you know, they've got that access to that at this point. Um, but yeah, you can, you can almost like manipulate like a small little forest like environment in, you know, especially these major cities where there are a lot of people and it's really neat. And I mean, and obviously using like in, in the case of SF2, there's a lot of natural um, forestry. There are a lot of natural, you know, environments like it's, 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 they basically put the city almost around it. It's like the best way is the best way to describe it. Um, there's also, um, gosh, you go just up the road to Berkeley um, out in Orinda area. There's a lot of like public national, like, like regional parks. Um, so, I mean, I guess for me, I mean, it's all within driving distance. If I absolutely wanted to go to the, the ocean, regardless of where I'm at in California, I can get to the ocean in like less than two hours. Um, if I wanted to go to the mountains, the same thing, less than two hours. It just depends on which direction you want to head and where it is that you want to end up. So I'm very lucky from that perspective. I think if you are not near a forest or, a, or a ocean, I think at least you should put some plants in, into your house. Plants can already give you that uh, feeling of nature close by and plants, they also have benefits and you don't have to leave your house in the first place 
if you don't have access to uh, a forest right away, it's the first step I think that you could, uh, you could yeah. do. That's an interesting have... point. And I mean, a friend of mine, he lives in an apartment and he, he's a massive fan of succulents and he has all these cactuses or cacti everywhere. And it is it creates a different in, environment, even though it's a, it's an apartment. He's got all this green and the, the, the cacti over it. And hopefully you don't trip over and fall on because that would be really <laughs> <expensive>. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but um, but it, it is the, the plant side of things. And, and also, I mean, the, the um, the succulents, they're not like they're high maintenance and then it's not like they're dropping leaves all over the place or anything like that. Um, and then you don't have to water them very often. So, but I, I, now that you mentioned that, I noticed like when you go to, when I go to this place, it is quite, there is a relaxing element to it has, because it has that green and green is also, I think a calming, blue and green, you mentioned mm. blue before, Heather, uh, blue mm. and green are both calming colors as well. And that, that makes a big difference. Yeah. I, plants uh, definitely factor in for me because as you know, and I've complained multiple times, I live where it's cold most of the year. And as as funny as it is to complain about that, that's actually a serious um, mental health issue for me sometimes. Uh, this, this winter was particularly long and with the COVID-19 issues that we've had, uh, feeling like you're stuck inside, having everything be gray and miserable outside, lacking vitamin D really starts to affect your happiness and your health after a while. So I think it's really important uh, during the winter, for instance, I look at uh, and read about and, and talk about tropical settings and I bring plants inside and succulents. I also brought palms and yucca, things that look kind of Mexican and South American in my house. It makes me really happy. Uh, and you really just try to find a any way that you can to escape and feel sunny and think about, you know, better weather and plants and nature. I try to bring it in. I have a nice palm tree painting here. Um, you got to do whatever you can to get a little bit of that inside when it's not available. I think that's a great idea what you just mentioned. My husband is the same. He suffers from this long winter uh, uh, depression always. I never thought yeah. about it. You know, I'm gonna buy him big palm tree uh, poster yeah. like, <laughs> and put it in front of him. <laughs> Yeah, this is the first year that I did that and honestly it changed my environment. It made me really happy. When the sun comes in the window, even in the middle of January, and it lights up, you know, your plants, you can kind of imagine that maybe you're in South America <laughs> for a moment. Um, and, and you trick your brain and you actually trick your brain into feeling lighter and happier. Yeah, because yeah. you're in a big garden, but you won't go outside as long as it's cold and wet. Is it? Oh, it's not my thing. You know, I want to have it. Uh, the sun has to shine before I go outside. So it's an interesting it's point you raise there about that psychology of you, you put those plants in there. You've also got the pictures there, and that, and that makes a big makes a big has made a big difference for you. And it, no doubt would make a big mm. difference if, if you can't get out. And like you say, when it is cold, having that yeah. that. Um, tricking of your brain so to speak so that you you do feel that little that relaxation that, and, and it's better right. for your health in that way yeah i liked something you said earlier damien about being in your beach house and dealing with stress versus being in the regular house and dealing with stress and you're perceiving it differently um and i have found since the sun came out and I'm catching some rays every day and I'm finally going for walks and I'm looking at bugs and I'm smelling all the smells. Um, all of the issues that were on my plate already that were stressful don't seem as bad, <laughs> you know? Like it's, it's really affected how I feel about my responsibilities and my anxieties as well. Just spending every day enjoying nature, it changes my stress. And that's a big thing for performance, like of your brain and how you operate. Because when, you, when you're when you stressed, your brain starts to, to narrow its focus. And this is where we move towards that fight or flight perspective. Yeah. So that as you're feeling that stress, uh, you, you have less options available to you. But then when you, you relax, and they said, I've noticed that a lot uh, mm -hmm. in these past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of stress and a lot of really tricky situations that I've had to, to think through 
and I think because I've been here where it's relaxing and not only that uh, with homeschooling as well I've got the little boy so every now and then I will you know we'll stop doing something we'll go out we'll run around a little bit then we'll come back in and do some work I found just that little bit of getting out and running around so it doesn't have to be um, I know it's sometimes we drive a long way to go to a park or something but we just go outside run around a little bit then we come back inside and it just clears the mind and I found I've solved problems that I probably wouldn't have solved because my brain is more open to it's not shut down because it's stressed it's actually yeah yeah and I found that made a huge difference and I, oh, I think right. that's what made a big difference in having that right um, and I don't think you need to be like, you know, like, I mean, I, I have the luxury of being where I am, but you can do that in the city as well. I think you can get out, even if it's just running around the yard or just do a walk around the block to clear your mind. Um, and, and then from that perspective, you, 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 you relax it, get away from that animal brain that is very focused and, and doesn't see as much and, and gives you more of an opportunity to, to deal with the things you've got to deal with. Exactly. Well, well I, I mean, we do need sunlight. Like, when you think about it, I mean, so if you get out during the day and you're, you know, you're in the sun or if you have any access to the sun, it's great. That's one thing I'm still trying to wrap my head around in California is we have, we have people with vitamin D deficiency here. And, you know, it's like you can get that from sunlight, like simply going outside and being in the sun or having natural sunlight come through your window has health, clear health benefits that they know about. And we have people in a state where it's very sunny and they, like I said, they, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know what to say to that, but it's, there's something to be said, you know, about simply getting out the sun, like you said, Damien, for like, you know, even, but maybe like three or five minutes, like, you know, several times a day, just going outside and, you know, being out like in more of a natural element. So, you know, even if you're in an apartment, like when I was in um, in the city in an apartment, I would regularly just I'd be working, and then I'd I'd go out, just go for a quick walk, and literally a ten minute walk. So it wasn't far. I'd just go out, do a loop around, and then come back in. And I found that really opened up my my um, my mind, and also I felt better. And part of that's physical activity as well. But like you say, it gives you that vitamin D, whether even if it's a cloudy day, you're still getting some of that sunshine, which does make a big difference. And yeah, I'm a bit flabbergasted by what you're telling me, um, Stephen, about people in California having a vitamin D deficiency. I don't see how that works. So. Yeah. How could you live there and not go out? <laughs> wow. I think it's also a matter of um, a, a willingness, you know? Um, we still see this couple, it's a couple of pharmacists, you know, they work from morning till evening in their pharmacy and they have very little time to go out, but every lunchtime they close for half an hour and you would see this couple for years on a bench sitting outside, whether it was cloudy or sunshine or not, only when it was pouring, raining really outside, they would not sit on the bench, but they would sit outside all year long for half an hour every lunchtime. So they would catch their sunshine because they were working from, you know, I don't know what time in the morning, very early till late in the evening. But they would say, we just go outside for, outside for the vitamin D, you know. It's a matter of choices. You know, you make a choice if you want to, to get that vitamin D, yes or no, if you ha don't have the time because of your job. You just have to make a choice. I go for it or I don't, you know, even if it's just 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's an interesting point. point. Like even as you say, and I mean, it is a choice. And if you're at work and you're, you know, you're stuck in an office, and, and I know most offices, you know, if you got your cubicle, and it's probably not the most exciting places. Although a lot of offices are now open space, which is great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you do have a, a morning tea and and or, or lunchtime. Even if, you know, if you get out and just go for for a quick walk, which would you know make the difference. And I, I love that story of those the, the couple sitting on the park bench, and that, that, that's beautiful. And you know. Wonderful. Yeah, every, for years we saw them sitting every day, you know, every time at lunchtime, you know, whatever the weather was, they would sit there, you know, with the coat sitting together, like two uh, two oldies, always there. It's lovely. That's it's lovely. a love story, it's a great love story, but we know it's about the sunshine because they would sit inside otherwise. 
But it doesn't have to be sunshine either. I, I know from my perspective, maybe I'm a little bit weird, but even on sometimes I like to when it's it's raining, I like to go out and and um, I used to go for a run when it was raining. I'd go for a run when it was raining, and, and I enjoyed the freshness of that 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 water hitting your face and and um, it just made me feel that little bit more alive. And mm. and sometimes even like I'll go out. It's a, it's a windy day. I mean, I put on a jacket so I'm like nice and warm, but just feeling that that briskness on your on your face is is quite refreshing as well. I that's find it a, cool. yeah, that's a sensory experience. I think that's really important to experience weather, not just sunny weather, but like to because that's a connection point with nature, right? Um, makes you feel like you're experiencing it and you're part of nature. Yeah. The same way, I like rain. Sorry. So I, was, I just said I'm yeah. the same way. I love rain. I love crazy weather. Mm. Yeah, I was going to add in, this is going to sound really weird and bizarre, but there's um, at least during the, during the time where the weather is tolerable, I love going out in the middle of the night. And on occasion, I'll go out on a bike ride, like plan on purpose, like out in the dead cusp of night where it's a clear sky. And I'll go out and make the destination like an open field and just lay out and look up at the stars and, you know, just hang out for a little bit and talk about something that's breathtaking and like, you know, an experience if you feel comfortable with doing it. Um, I think that the dark, you know, gets a lot of, um, a lot of wind for like because of horror movies and because of all that jazz however it's a completely different experience you know when you kind of just did you know just submerge yourself into it and actually fully experience it so it's just cool. kind of adding in like a weird little thing that i do yeah I, I, I can relate to that i've actually done that not in a field but i've laid down and watched the stars and i, I remember seeing i actually saw a satellite pass over once and it was like i was going wow that's a satellite how cool is that um but yeah just looking up the stars is just it is very relaxing and, and good for you and, and i think that adds that balance in your life too it gives you something a bit, a bit different sorry enemy you were, you were saying like, um, and when my kids were small, they would like to go outside and dance in the rain in their underwear when there was a big thunder and when the thunder was passed and they would dance outside on the terrace. They would they would do anything to go outside, but it was this negative charge of the of the rain, you know, it was really I mean it, it was uh, well, it's a negative ions uh, what I mean, but it was this recharging energy they would go outside and they would be completely recharged they would love it i still have movies of it they would dance in the rain they were crazy about these things always they still talk about it i i forbid them now to walk outside in their underwear to dance <laughs> in the rain. Not, not in their underwear <laughs> don't and do it in the neighbors <laughs> the negative ions uh, when it's raining you can smell and that reminds me of you know we put so much emphasis on aromatherapy for health treatments these days but we forget that nature is filled with aromatherapy uh, yesterday I was driving by a forest and my windows down in the car and I could smell the moss and the dirt and the trees like you could smell the woods you know and when it's raining you can smell the rain and these things must be so healing because I absolutely crave the smells of nature. Salt water and the smell uh, of oh, the yes. ocean down by a pier, you smell like the brine of the sea and tar and uh, boat fuel <laughs> and all the different things that come with a harbor. These things are nostalgic and healing and wonderful for me. And you have, you know, like your brain fires off all this recognition when you smell certain smells. I love that so yeah. transformative i went to a um a friend took me to a, a lavender farm and uh, mm. that was just like i i actually felt <laughs> relaxed like we're going in yeah. there smell the lavender and um walking around it was just like oh wow and it was like it was almost you know um i won't say it was like a drug thing but it was just it was really just very calming and, and very relaxing maybe it was the color too i think the colors make um a, a big difference as well there's this just a, a, a sea of purple um and the smell of lavender was just just really really relaxing so i think we underestimate that like you were saying heather that the sensory experience of the smells and how they they, they affect us and that and that's 
where aromatherapy comes from. It, it comes from those smells, that's where they draw it from. Yeah. The other thing that we haven't touched on too, something that I love to do, like I love like, we, you know, we've talked about smell, we've talked about taste, we've talked about all these other things. What about touch? Like, I love, like, when I go to the beach, like, I love, like, putting my feet in the sand and, like, you know, curling my toes just to feel the sand or putting my feet or hands in the water, head in the water. Um, the touch aspect that comes with it is huge, at least for, you know, for me. I don't know about you guys, but it's, you know, it's very, yeah. like, reassuring and it's, it's, it's almost like, dang, I'm actually present here. And this is uh, this is right in front of me. Like it's uh, you know the experience is unreal, especially when I was out in Hawaii. Like the sand is so fine out there. I've never I've never been on a beach with sand finer finer than Hawaii. And then the water was like a crystal blue, and you know it was like the perfect temperature. It was like maybe seventy degrees out, and the water was like you know sixty five or seventy degrees. So yeah, I, I'm with you then that. So okay, to me. Uh, for me, it's, it's flowers. I know these things. You know, I like to go outside, touch the grass. You know, all these different kinds of grasses. You know, it's the way they move. All these things. You know, I like to to touch these things. You know, mm -hmm. every morning when I go out, I love these things. I don't have a beach, but I like to, to touch the plants. I'm juxtaposed with with what. Um... Stephen was talking about the beach. I mean, I love putting my feet in the sand and, and moving them around. But then at the same token, I don't like getting sand in you know, crevices and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of Probably, like, I just uh... like with the beach. I find it really relaxing. I love on the water, but then I, I don't like, you know, getting sand in all different places. I used to have, we had a separate car down here, which was the beach car. And um, and that was always full of sand, which was great because it didn't get in the other car. But um, yeah, it's sort of you know. Don't don't roll around on it. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay upright. <laughs> oh boy, I can't help it. When we're down the beach, we have to run around and jump and do somersaults and things like that. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. Um, I like to go barefoot whenever I can when I'm out in the woods. And I used to go to an overnight summer camp every year to volunteer. Uh, with teenagers at camp and when I go whenever I've gone to a cottage or I go camping usually very quickly I get used to having no shoes no sandals and just walk on bare feet and my feet get uh, like very resilient and strong I don't it doesn't hurt to walk on rocks or walk on you know branches and twigs and stuff I get like you know really sturdy and I love the feeling of running through the woods. Um, I'll go for a jog or whatever with bare feet and it feels amazing. You feel like perfectly connected and one with your environment. Oh, wow. Yeah, it doesn't Something like to be said for calluses for sure. Sorry, mm. guys. Didn't... Sorry, no, no, no. I was going to say, yeah, just notice the difference like when you're walking on concrete to walking on, you know, through a path through the, the, the forest or even I've noticed just walking moving from the concrete to the grass that's next to it and walking along that it's a completely different sensation even when you've got shoes on without shoes on it's massively different like you're saying Heather um, but yeah. Yeah, with shoes on just walking on the grass I, I find there's a completely different sensation it's a bit more relaxing it's not as jarring I think that that's what makes it the difference um, but it's certainly I, I noticed that just making that shift to walking on the grass is, is relaxing as well, which has got to be good for your health. Yeah. We're running out of time. Do you want to um, give us give one takeaway to our audience as to, to what, you know, with nature and how to, to maximize your health from that perspective? Um, I'll, I'll go. I think that, you know, since we all live in different climates and different environments, we're not all blessed to be by the ocean or by the forest, unfortunately. Um, first thing is to try to seek that out, right? But if you can't have that, if you don't have that, I really recommend shifting your mindset to be almost like hyper aware and appreciative of any little bit of nature that you can get in your life. So try to notice the smells, you know, try to, when you open your windows, 
take in the breeze and think about it, notice it, bring plants in and look at them. I think uh, if you're more intentional about noticing nature and appreciating all the little things, you can really get some of the same benefits without having a whole forest in, you know, in your neighborhood. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Enemy? Well, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm flabbergasted what's, uh, what, uh, what she said right now. Um, well, I, I recognize someone who she, uh, who she just described, someone I, I live with, you know, he stops by every flower and he's... Ah, uh, yes. I'm happy you said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my husband is like that, you know. And it's true, you know, you don't need much to to be uh, to be happy, you know. Everything is is beautiful. Life is beautiful, and you can be very uh, joyful just by looking everything with an open uh, with an open look. Like um, everything is uh, is wonderful. Even the smallest flower on on the pavement, you know. Even on the pavement, a, a flower can grow, and he, he loves all these little things in the middle of the town. So uh, absolutely. I, uh, I appreciate your feedback. Fantastic. Stephen? I was going to say, if you don't, uh, I'm elaborating on this, if you don't have access to like nature per se, um, doing the best that you possibly can to create a room within your immediate vicinity or in your house, in your apartment, that kind of reflects nature to some extent. Um, Otherwise, I mean, if you have access to nature, I just encourage you to take full advantage of it and to go out and to, you know, be aware of, of it while you're in it. Fantastic. Well, this has been Exceptional Effort Mind and Body, where we've been talking about escaping and resetting in nature the benefits of tranquility. Uh, we've had Stephen, Heather and Enemy, and I'm Damien Andrews. Thank you very much for joining us.